Back in the age of the monoliths, we were using Session to handle authentication and authorization. New Session was created for every user and the state of the authentication was stored inside of the Session. If the user credentials during the login process were fine, then the state was authenticated. If not, then well, not. Client, in this case, usually the browser had the Session ID and was sending the Session ID together with every request to the backend application. Backend application was checking in the session server if the session exists and then inside of the session if the user is authenticated and authorized and if so it was granting him the access to resource requested. However it was not that good. Whatever works with monoliths might not really work with the microservices. The biggest problem with the session system is that every application that wants to check authentication authorization of the user and access the session has to have the access to the common Common session server. If multiple microservices are inside the same cluster, then let's say it's not a problem. However, when you would like to exchange the users between different systems on different locations, then it's getting problematic. Giving access to your own session server to the third party applications is rather never really a good idea. What if there was a better way? Luckily, there is. It's called the JWT, which stands for JSON Web Token. On the technical level, the JWT is just a JSON. Or, to be more precise, three base64 URL encoded JSONs. Header, payload, and the signature. On the more practical level, the JWT is the bearer of the identity. In the JWT setup, one of the servers called the issuer is responsible for the user and the identification of the user. The issuer holds the users, holds the roles, holds the permission, and it is the system that verifies the user credentials. When the user enters and sends the username and the password, the issuer runs the authentication. It verifies if the user exists, if the password matches, if the user is allowed to log in, etc., 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 and ultimately issues the JWT token for this user. And the JWT itself holds the user's ID. Identity. Basically, it says this token was issued by this issuer on this date, is valid for so long, was issued for this specific user, and those are the roles and permissions that are granted for the user. As a result, every application, every system, microservice, front-end or back-end application that trusts the issuer should also trust every request that holds the JWT issued by this specific issuer. One of the main concepts of the whole JWT architecture is trust delegation. You, as the microservice, you do not verify everything, you delegate the trust to someone else. And the someone else, in this case, is the issuer. You might ask a question, is it even safe? Because if it's just a JSON, can I just fake it? Create my own JWT and pretend I'm someone completely else? Easily hack every system that uses the JWT? Here comes the beauty of this whole solution. The JWT is safe, it cannot be faked because the JWT is immutable. You cannot pretend you are someone else if you do not have the access to the keys stored in the issuer. JWT holds not only header, not only payload, but also a signature. When the issuer issues the JWT token, it also signs the header and the payload with its own secret private key. And that means if you would like to fake a JWT, WT, you would have to have access to the issuer's private key. And most probably if you already have the issuer's private key, then either you are responsible for the issuer or you hacked the issuer. How can anyone check if the JWT was really issued by this specific issuer? If the issuer signed the token with its private key, which is private, it also should have the public key. Every issuer makes the public key publicly available. Everyone who would like to verify if the token was really issued by a specific issuer, it only has to obtain the public key from the issuer and check 
If the signature matches the public, if yes, then as long as we assume that there was no man in the middle attack between you and the issuer, the issuer really issued this specific token. And if you trust the issuer, you should also trust that the token is valid and holds the truth. So to sum things up, JWT is immutable. It cannot be, or at least it cannot be easily faked. With JWT, you delegate the trust to the issuer. If you trust the issuer, that means you should also trust every request with a token issued by the issuer you trust. JWT is also atomic. It means that it holds all the required information required for the authentication and authorization process. You do not have to access any magical server to get the information about who the user is Everything is stored as claims inside of the payload of the JWT token. Also, because JWT is standardized, you can easily exchange the users and identities between completely different systems. If someone logged in in the system A and got the JWT token, and then this someone sends this token to your application, but you decided to trust the application number one, the identity is successfully transferred and authentication and authorization process can proceed. And this was not possible, at least not easily possible with the session-based mechanism. And finally, you absolutely should not be afraid of the JWTs. They are quite a cool technology and when you get to them, they are fun to work with. If you would like to extend your coding knowledge, here's another video for you. I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching and like always, happy coding!